Greetings fellow Empyreans, I am Astrothi, and I am very excited to be working in conjunction with Talking in Stations to bring you the story of one of the greatest threats to New Eden, the Drifters. We plan to make YouTube videos just like this one to help players of all skill levels understand the game of EVE Online, its universe, and its mechanics. As a first offering, I thought it was only appropriate that I answer the question I am most frequently asked. Who are the Drifters? Enjoy. By 2730 AD, nearly 21,000 years before the modern era, the human race had colonized its home system of soul. Within 5,000 years, humanity had stretched out to consume all resources within the range of their warp drive technology. Near the end of the 8th millennia, a miracle came to the human race in the form of a semi-stable wormhole, which connected them to a previously undiscovered land of prosperity. Within a few short years, the largest colonization effort in human history began as countless souls poured through the Eve Gate and into New Eden. However, the fortunes of mankind took a turn less than a century later in 8061 when the Eve Gate collapsed, cutting off the colonies of New Eden Cluster from Terra. The cost was devastating to those remaining. Countless colonies were lost, and the very history of mankind faded into legend. Little is known from this prehistory, but we do know of the existence of three civilizations that held influence in those early days. The Yanyong, masters of gravitonic technology and force field theory, settled in the Detol region in modern-day Galente space, but all records of them end around the year 9000 AD. Unsettlingly, the remains of the Talakan Empire, which mostly are found in the mysterious Anoikis, a series of far-flung star systems accessible in the modern day only through unstable wormholes, seem to have also fallen from power at about this time. Of all of the ancient empires, the only one whom we have met in the modern era are the enigmatic Jovian. Being a relatively primitive civilization compared to their contemporaries, the Jovians survived the Eve Gate collapse by having their entire civilization loaded on immense arcs and shuffled at barely faster than light speeds. The majority of the population remained in suspended animation in a virtual reality environment known as the Construct. Those inside of the Construct used the time dilation of the simulation to rapidly advance their civilization beyond anything imaginable in the physical world. Soon, the limitations of reality were no match for this new civilization. To protect them from corruption and to ensure a tether to reality, a law was established in the early days known as the One Body, One Mind Law, which simply states that for you to have a consciousness within the construct, one must also have a physical body connected to it. This serves two purposes. First, it makes sure that each being inside of the construct was at least once human, but also the construct itself was eventually transformed to use the brains of those connected to it as part of its computational systems. Thus, removing the physical body would disrupt a part of the construct, or even take parts with it. Outside of the construct, the Jovians had gone through three distinct empires. The first collapse occurred when the highly engineered Elders began suppressing the biological experimentation of the other Jovians. When Michael Bohr reunited the Jovians in a second empire, they began performing increasingly bizarre experiments on themselves, causing both the Jovian disease and the formation of the sleeper civilization out of those living in the construct. The Jovian disease is not so much of an actual disease as an engineered defect in Jovian biology that causes melancholy, madness, and death to all Jovians on a long enough timeline. Eventually, the Jovians turned to those who lived inside of the construct looking for answers to the disease, and the only solution was to enter the suspended animation and join them within the construct. The conflict and disorder that came from this era is known only as the Shrouded Days, and no one, not even the remaining Jove, seemed to fully understand what happened in those days. What does seem to be true is that eventually those inside of the Construct, now known as Sleepers, fled the Jovians, eventually settling in what we now know as Wormhole Space, or Noikus. The remaining Jovians migrated to modern-day Jove Space and continued to struggle against the disease as they monitored the younger empires now only emerging from the Dark Ages. Eventually, modern politics, in combination with the uncontrollable disease, led the Jovians to retreat further and further from the rest of New Eden. But as one empire falls, another rises. Deep inside of Anoika, separated from New Eden by unfathomable time and space, a violation of the construct was born. 
Without the shepherding of those outside of the construct, an entity which violated the one body, one mind law appeared within the construct. A small child with black eyes that had never been born and had never had a physical body. This thing was called the Other and was rejected and hated by the sleepers. But this seems to have only fueled its desire to take over and consume. And over time, more of these defects were made. A little over a decade and a half ago, in the year YC-105, the Empire of Amar was having their own trouble. The Emperor, Hydrian VII, ruler of Amar for three centuries, had died of turret disease on August 28, YC-105. The Amar Empire is ruled by a small handful of noble houses, each with a selected heir to head the house. When the time came, the heirs competed with one another in a process known as the Succession Trials. The winner becomes the new emperor, or empress, and the losers must commit suicide in a ritual that is known as the Rite of Shackle Sin. So when the five houses competed in YC-105, Dorian Corazor was chosen and became Emperor Dorian II, but this did not settle the issues within the Empire. Jamil Sorum, the heir to the highly militant Sorum House, was reluctant to give her life in the ancient traditions, and when she lost, conspired with her loyalists on a plan to cheat death. The very flesh of the heirs is seen to be sacred by the Amar, so the idea of cloning a body and mind of Jamil was against Amar scriptures, but this did not stop Jamil's loyal follower Felic Grange from secretly cloning her at the Matriarch Citadel. These events had not gone unnoticed in Anoikis. The other reached out across the cosmos and discovered the plot to illegally and secretly clone the failed heir to the Amar's throne. When her mind was transported to the Matriarch Citadel, the Other hopped on board and stitched itself into her brain. Once there, the Other whispered into the heir's mind, teaching her the secrets of ancient technology and revealing the location and function of an incredibly powerful superweapon, which she then used to defeat the Elder Fleet of the Mimitar as they flew above Jamil's birth planet in Sorum Prime. The recent assassination of Dorian II had plunged the Amar into chaos, and Jamil's triumphant return had been deemed a miracle of God. This led to Jamil being crowned the Empress of Amar. After using the weapon, she discarded it to allow it to fall into the hands of the Rogue Drones, a hive that is also likely under control of the other. A Sisters of Eve ship that was doing investigation on the Eve Gate, where the weapon was first found, traced the energy readings to the weapon's location. A Blood Raider group trailed the SOE ship and witnessed them being destroyed by the Rogue Drone Hive. However, the Blood Raiders, probably through the help of the Society of Conscious Thought, or at the very least some Jovians, were able to disable the drones. The Blood Raiders would have acquired the weapon for themselves and brought upon an endless harvest of blood, if not for the Valiant Thuckers. A tribal ship and crew who chose to sacrifice themselves to destroy the weapon rather than to let it fall into the wrong hands. The explosion triggered the Isogen 5 that was being packed inside of Jamil's ship and the hive surrounding it. This cache of Isogen 5 was one of several that was created by the pre-Dark Age empires and stored near certain stars. Isogen 5 itself is a super rare isotope of Isogen that seems to only occur around certain blue stars and have unheard of gravitonic properties. To make matters worse, this cache was quantumly entangled with at least nine other caches which also exploded simultaneously. These explosions poured energy into the local stars, causing massive coronal mass injections, destroying the closest planet near each star. This is known as the Salian Incident, or the Apocrypha Event. In addition to the shattered planets created by the explosions, numerous traversable temporal defects known as wormholes began appearing, leading people to discover temporary shortcuts between distant stars, as well as connecting them to the long-lost Anoikis. Still in partial control of Jamil, the other pushed her to send her scientists into the uncharted space, breaching the sleeper conclaves and extracting the suspended bodies of the sleepers. They then used the sleeper implants to make their first immortal foot soldiers, the Templars. Inside of the construct, the other used this chance to imprison rebellious sleepers and to send out copies of the other into the minds of the Templars. Eventually, the dangers of the Templar was discovered and most were purged. Most. Now partially freed from the construct, the other constructed massive hives and cracked open the sleeper enclaves, using the bodies itself to puppet them in order to control their newly developed warship, the Drifter Battleship. 
Around this time, something happened that the other didn't expect. The stars we now know as Anoikis were stitched together by the ancient Talokan. They did so by constructing a Dyson Swarm lattice around stars and using the energy to punch holes into reality and traverse them using static gates. One such star, W477 TACP, is located in what is now Jovian space. The explosion from the Isogen 5 caches sent energy through the network pouring into W477 TACP and damaging the lattice around it. Several years later, in YC-117, W-477 TACP exploded, causing an even larger event blowing open the inner chambers of Anoikis and leading the Drifter forces to pour into known space and began exploring and dismantling the sleeper caches and Jovian observatories that had up until this point been cloaked and observing us for nearly a hundred years. In the modern era, this event is known as the Caroline Star Event. What they want is unclear. They have five wormholes, each named after a kind of fortification. Inside of each is a hive, filled with drifter battleships and support cruisers. Highland Tukas warned us of a great invasion that never seemed to have come. However, at the center of each of these hives is a massive vortex of energy surrounding a pile of what may have been fragments taken from the observatories. Additionally, from the records that we have gained from the Triglavians, we have discovered that these drifters have entered into Abyssal Dead Space and disrupted the Triglavian Collective that had been hiding there since the end of the Second Jovian Empire, the very same empire that drove the Sleepers off over 2,000 years ago. The Triglavians see the drifters as heirs to the Second Jovian Empire, and while they do not understand their artificial nature fully, they identify them as the ancient enemy Azdaja, or the ancient enemy Dragon. Now the drifters are arriving in force in Poshvin, and the Triglavians are warping space-time to gain a foothold into K-Space. This ancient war has spilled out into the modern day as the Precursor Crisis.